discuss polymerase chain reaction. Polymerase is an enzyme tag DNA often we call DNA polymerase is going to be used in the amplification or copying a particular uh, DNA sequence rather a sequence of DNA which is of our interest that is going to serve a purpose of being the target DNA. So a, a brief discussion of the parts first of all and then I shall go to mm -hmm. the processing of DNA. Mainly there are three, three processes which is uh, going to be covered in DNA polymerase chain reaction. Uh, namely the processes are denaturation, annealing and extension. But before I explain the whole process to you, a brief introduction about the whole requirement. All we need is a target DNA sequence which has either ends being known to us. Whole DNA sequence at its either end should be known to us. This is the only reason. Template DNA is a target sequence that is a complex mixture of many different type of sequences that we re usually find in genomic DNA. And in this case, even RNA can serve this purpose which we get from a DNA copy, copied and then uh, with the help of the enzyme RNA transcriptase. Next point is oligonucleotide fragments. These are short single stranded DNA molecules, typically 20 bases it could be. And these primers are getting attached. First step when it occurs, when I'll be explaining the processing, then you'll find the first step is the double stranded helix gets destabilized and it separates. After being separated, when it really becomes a single strand, then these oligonucleotide primers with a, which are actually short single stranded DNA molecules, typically as I said 20 bases it contains, it gets attached to the single stranded DNA, just like a bracket and when it attaches itself, it doesn't attach to the same DNA uh, strand, it attaches to either ends first of all and the second thing is that it is from the either end of the opposite DNA strands that we are. Now let's talk about the point that is DNA polymerase. As the name serves DNA polymerase, this is the name of the enzyme which is going to help us in producing polymers of uh, DNA molecules in this cases. In this case and it is to a scientific and a chemical reaction. So what we need to understand from where we got uh, we get this DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is actually the source is TAC DNA. TAC DNA is the name of a bacterium which is found in hot springs that is Thermus aquaticus and it has the it has the capability to withstand very high temperature. That's why this has been chosen. Usually in a thermal cycler also the same process is carried out in a fast way and that we can discuss a bit later. Right now TAC DNA what does it do? It after the primer gets attached to the sink. first step is the double helix gets destabilized. The destabilization takes place due to high temperature. Often the temperature that is uh, considered is usually above 90. So you can take some of the books serve, uh, say that it is 95 degrees centigrade. You can say 92 degrees centigrade. Rather it goes higher than 90 degrees. That means this TAC DNA has the capability of withstanding high temperature. This is the first point. The next point is that when the tag DNA attaches itself to these uh, primers, the primers are first attaching to the uh, single stranded DNA which has got separated. The helix has got destabilized. Destabilization takes place due to action of even it can initiate the action means the action is uh, initiated even in the presence of a uh, compound namely formamide. That is a bit later I will come to it. Right now what we are discussing is this DNA polymerase attached, attaches itself to the primer and next it will produce a new strand. To produce a new strand it requires the action of these uh, means it requires a double strand also. So who is going to serve this purpose of producing a double strand? It is these primers which are producing the uh, means the complementary bases which are going to be the purpose of serving or and making a double strand over there. 
so usually what it is the the sequence suppose it reads as a c t g uh, then what will be its complementary base if it is a then definitely it's going to be t over here if it is c then definitely it's going to be g over here this is how the complementary base pairing rule is telling us all about so before you uh, see this video this is my advice you should uh, refer to dna structure also and dna replication so after primer attaches itself it is the role of the dna polymerase which is going to help in extension that is it is going to make a new strand the new strand that it is going to produce is with the help of these nucleotides which are uh, going on in the means it keeps on adding up so the extension takes place and thus a new strand so in this way the primers are going to direct the dna polymerase to uh, amplify or copy only the target sequence the role of dntp now in each pcr reaction we need four dntps deoxynucleotide triphosphates these are going to be used by the dna molecules to produce a new strand the name of these dntps are datp dgtp dctp and dttp now uh, before you study pcr reaction this is my advice that you must study dna replication and dna stru uh, structure so that you can understand this topic better so after uh, talking about the D, uh, dntps the next factor is how the denaturation process takes place in each pcr reaction the three phases are there what are the three phases first is melting of dna uh, usually a dna strands which is a uh, double helical structure we know that in between uh, a and t and in between g and c there is presence of hydrogen bonds in between a and t there are two hydrogen bonds which gets easily destabilized in comparison uh, to uh, g and c where there are three hydrogen bonds and it takes longer time to get destabilized so in this case uh, we can talk about another compound formamide formamide helps in destabilizing the double helical structure the temperature at which melting of dna takes place is called tm the melting temperature usually what we find if uh, melting temp after melting comes the factor that it is cooled if there is rapid cooling normally what is seen is due to rapid cooling 50% of the dna strands remain as a single strand bed that is the dna hybridization process may not take place which is reannealing we call it so that's a different factor let's talk about denaturation in denaturation melting of dna can take place with the help of a compound when the double helical structure gets destabilized with the help of a compound formamide other factors are high salt concentration of a buffer solution and the other one is a ph value if the melting if the melting temperature is very close then also we find that uh, close to the tm value of course uh, then we find that 50% of the dna can remain single stranded so in between g and c that base composition will help us in ascertaining uh, the tm value the next step is annealing now what happens in annealing we know that the primers get attached so in first the temperature gets raised above 90 degrees possibly it is 92 93 94 95 degree centigrade in some books it is also written 98 degree centigrade then the temperature is cooled if there is rapid cooling what could be the consequence consequence is that 50 percent of the dna may remain single stranded so this is a possibility rapid cooling should not be there also if the melting happens that it is very close to the tn tm value then also 50% uh, of the dna molecules remains single stranded so here when i'm discussing about annealing i must say annealing takes place when the primers get attached as the primers are getting attached these are carrying these are going to be attached to the either end of the dna strand this we know these are single stranded dna molecules which are carrying typically uh, a short strand short sequence of typically 20 bases and when it attaches itself 
it must follow the complementary base pairing rule as I have explained. If it is A, C, T, G, then A opposite side it will be T. If it is C, then opposite side it is going to be G. This is called the complementary base pairing rule. And the last step is that the, after attachment of the primers, it is that the tap DNA, which is the DNA polymerase, attaches to these primer region. We know that the tap DNA requires a double stranded region. For this purpose, it is usually the primers which help in this process and it makes a double strand and then the extension takes place. In this way, a particular DNA sequence, which is our target DNA, which has to be copied, gets amplified and it can be copied to a million fold reactions. I hope. So, depending on the abundance of the target DNA, how much abundantly the target DNA is present, we can say that 20 to 40 cycles uh, of PCR will help us to produce a number of DNA molecules, a number of DNA copies. Usually right now we can talk about mm, the thermal cycler which is going to initiate the process. There are small tubes present over there which has got uh, chemicals in it. What are these chemicals? These chemicals are the primers, the tap DNA which is going to be present and helping in this process and other chemicals are also present, present there. So this is with the help of almost 20 to 40 cycles of PCR reactions will help us to produce our target DNA sequence and it can be amplified to a million fold number of times because we know we began this video with this thought that uh, PCR a polymerase chain reaction it is a chain of a polymer which is going to be produced and, and in this case we know that it is a DNA molecule which is going to produce a million fold uh, DNA molecules from one particular DNA sequence. We have a microprocessor heating block which is uh, known as a thermal cycler that helps with our uh, DNA duplication and uh, amplification of the target sequence and in this way we can produce it. Another point, a small point to be kept in mind is that when the synthesis of the strand takes place, usually in the first cycle a very long strand is going to be produced which can even cross the limit but in the subsequent cycles these come to a certain a limited number when it has the end with the primer which is containing the sequence the target DNA sequence so I hope you have understood uh, this uh, lesson of PCR and we can have a diagrammatic representation on it thank you a small diagrammatical representation shows the first step and the